Sorry for last week, we had a computer update, which kind of cut off the live stream, so we apologize for that. And today, as we get together in this third Sunday of Advent, it's a great day. We have the baptism today, and Calvin has agreed so willingly and so wonderfully to be baptized, and he's such a, a beautiful child. So, great celebration in the middle of Advent. Let us begin our prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son. Spirit and blessed be Almighty God, to your hearts, we all desire to know and pray in the spirit. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and word one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seen. Thank you. 
from the book of prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given. The majesty of Carmel and Shannon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and stay with God. Strain the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are in fearful health, Be strong, do not fear. Fear is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the dead unstopped. Then the lame shall weep like the deer, and the tongue of the speechless in retort. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. Grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called a holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people, no traveler, not even fools. To go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. <clears throat> they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Psalm 146, you will pray this awesome and I will begin. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who gives justice to those who are oppressed. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord shall reign forever. A reading from the letter of James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the door as an example of suffering and patience. Beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you. And John heard in prison. What the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. 
and the poor have the good news brought to them. Blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken in the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This particular gospel is presented as Jesus teaches us for us to really understand and get something that we as human race, as a believing people, as a people of faith, have really not gotten right since, well, Adam and Eve. So it's, it's something that's long confused. I remember when I was a senior in high school, my high school, uh, the teachers went out on strike my senior year. And I remember the picture in the paper and it was some of the teachers were out and they were, were doing their thing and they had a placard and the placard said, no more messenger bulls. So I would imagine that there was an issue with direct communication. In Jesus Christ, there is and there are no more messenger people. God himself comes to us. And that is really the significant message, but then there is a little bit more to that. Because as we see the Old Testament end and the New Testament begin, it is important to make the step that we see John the Baptist <clears throat> struggling with and not really knowing the answer to in today's gospel. For John the Baptist, he hears what Jesus is doing. It says it very clearly that he heard what the Messiah was doing. And for some reason, and really a, a really acceptable reason, because a lot of people felt the same way, Jesus was not doing what he had expected. Now, again, you think of John the Baptist, no person greater than he, born of woman, all that stuff. You know, you, you remember in the other Gospels, here, John the Baptist, as Jesus is walking through him at the Jordan, and he's about to do the baptism because behold, the Lamb of God, this guy's got some insight, he's a prophet. And then, of course, you have the baptism, the sky's open, and this is my beloved son, who my favor rests. So John had no lack of information and special revelation of God, but really for John and really the people of the time, Jesus did not fit their expectations. Their expectations were political ones as well as religious ones. They were expecting this Messiah to come and throw the Romans out. The occupying force was going to be removed. And then the Messiah would go into the temple and go into the religious elite, and he would, he would get rid of all the corruption. And finally, their religious faith would be something that was not subject to such human failings and faults. <laughs> None of that. He confronted it, but he didn't do any of that stuff. He was not like King David. He didn't raise an army. He didn't go out on, on, on journeys to conquer. So John is kind of on, on a dilemma. He is, and he knows the Old Testament revelation. He knows the expectation of the people. And Jesus is out there. And what's he doing? He's doing all these miracles, which are wonderful things. So he sends 
some of his friends to Jesus and said, are you the one? And it would be very easy for Jesus to say, yes, I am the Messiah. It would be done and over with. But John did not need to hear a title. He did not need to hear something that people had confused all along. And if you think about it, think about our, our history as people of faith, and particularly as Christians, how much craziness has gone on in the name of Christ, which is really not what Christ is all about. And so Jesus understands this and understands human nature well. And so he doesn't use the title. Just call me the son of God. No. And he could have done that. He was. But what did it mean to be the son of God? What did it mean to be the Messiah? So it's no words for titles. It's what is involved are his actions. He goes to the people that John sends and he says, what do you see? And what do you hear? And that's where Jesus shows us that God is not up in heaven, but some Zeus throwing down thunderbolts, you know, oppressing people and being mean and nasty. It's God among us. Think of how he came and think of how he was born and we will celebrate in a couple of weeks. He doesn't come born in a royal palace. He comes with very great simplicity. He comes as one of us, that all of us can understand, that all of us can be close to and have a relationship, because that is the will of God. So all those things that go on in Christianity and in faith, and maybe even in our own minds, like when we talk about John the Baptist, there's confusion here. We've seen so many things that are contrary to this, but Jesus is saying, listen and see. Jesus is personally involved. God is doing things. And if the other thing, too, of all people, who would have sat back and said, okay, I'm the one, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and you're going to do this, and you're going to back and you know how that goes. That is not what our faith is about either. Our faith is being involved and being a part of things. He did not fight Rome or the sinners or the corrupt people. He invited them. He welcomed them. Now, wait a minute. The Romans? You've got to be kidding. Pagans, they took over our country. These religious leaders, they bleed us dry, and they serve the Roman Empire. And there is something there that is just not right for him. But what he says then is, tell John that the blind see. Of course, a credential from the Old Testament, but what it is, is saying to us that we need to think. How is it that we show love to others who haven't seen it in their lives? The lame walk. How is it that we remove obstacles from the lives of others who encounter them and not put them in their way? Well, if I really want to be a Christian, let me give you these 10 or 40 pages of things you've got to learn and you've got to do. What did Jesus say? <laughs> love God and love the neighbor. So we need to remove the obstacles to faith for other people. The lepers. Society rejects a lot of people. At a very young age, we find out when we go to school, certain people are this and certain people are that. At least we're told of that. And some people are really bad and nasty in the eyes of the world. And what Jesus said is, no, we're all loved by God. And so how do we get closer to and help and befriend and love those who decided society rejects and not be the bullies who oppress them? Particularly in some cases, we need to talk about sinners. If you want to get to the area of judgment, well, let's not go there. The deaf, the people who have yet to hear the word of God, maybe they've heard the the scriptures read and it's all nice and funny and stuff like that. But they hear the word of God at the lips of us as we express not just, you know, hey, you want to you want to pick up this book and I'm going to tell you what it says, but in words, kindness and compassion and love. 
that they can hear and they can see in our actions the things that they have not perceived before, the dead. And that's a really interesting thing. Christianity can really be seen as you know, this real world of religion. We have this Savior who died on the cross and came back again. And actually today, we will say in this ritual for baptism, those who are here who are buried in the death of Christ, it's the death of ignorance. It's the death of, of nastiness. It's the death of all that. The baby has to But what we say here is we have new life. New life in the love of God. So we take all that garbage in our lives and we, we put that aside. And the other thing with this whole image of death is that no one, no one is too far gone. No one is beyond the redemption of God. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And the poor. Certainly we need to take care of those who have material needs. Food, clothing, shelter. But the fact is the poor are should be really all of us because we realize that we, without God, have nothing. So it's not a matter of let's get rid of all our material possessions and get stuff on that. It's just knowing that we need to believe in, follow, and have faith in God. And that's where that good news comes in. That's the end of all that stuff. Is the good news is that we are a part of a God who loves us so much that He comes to be one of us. He comes to show us how close we can be to Him and not some distant whatever. But we've got to stop, and it's, it's, uh, it says in um, the letter of James. You know, stop the complaining and the criticizing. Stop the judging. Because if God's not going to take that role, we should not either. But the fact is, we need to do this ourselves. You do it, is what God says to us. Just as Jesus has done, so what we do. We hear that in the multiplication of loaves. You know, these people here, they don't have enough food. The disciples go, you know, send them out on the road store. And Jesus says, you give them something. And they say, we have nothing. And they come to realize that, that they didn't have a company. With God, they had everything. And that is why we are, as a faith, a people who celebrate God's presence among us, but then we share it with each other, and what we don't have God provides. But we need to be involved in that. We don't sit back just for the ride. Don't look to others to do what you notice needs to be done. If we notice it, it's God in our life saying, hey, maybe I should be involved in helping this. Today is this baptism, this wonderful celebration. It's an opportunity for all of us to renew ourselves as we will with our professing of faith and the whole ritual of that. What does God see? It's beautiful life, unique, precious. Sacred. And the other question is what will Calvin see in us? Did we see God reflected to him in our compassion, in our love, in our care, in our concern? And that's the family of God together. So that is today what we really celebrate. What God gives and what God gives to others through us. May God be blessed. Okay, if the parents and the godparents, and of course, Calvin would come forward, please. Let's see how well I did with these camera angles. Please, you could stand behind me, please. Thank you. All right. I invite the parents and godparents of Calvin to present him for baptism. I present Calvin to receive the sacrament of baptism. 
Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? We will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Calvin to grow into the full stature of Christ? We will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce Satan. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Christ Jesus and accept him as your savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. And do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And I ask the entire congregation. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Calvin in his life in Christ? Yeah. Let us join with Calvin, who is committing himself to Christ, and renew our own baptismal vows. You may stand if you wish or remain seated if that's your more comfortable. Do you believe in God the Father? Yeah. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I believe Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. Let us now pray for Calvin, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver Calvin, O Lord, from the layer of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life to spirit. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection. And look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. 
Therefore, in the joyful obedience to your son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Calvin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon your servant Calvin the forgiveness of sins and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give Calvin an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to, and the will to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Calvin, you are sealed by the gift of the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Calvin, receive the light of Christ, a sign of the new life enkindled within you. Creator God, as Calvin is wrapped in his blanket, may he ever be enfolded in your unconditional motherly embrace. Surround him with comfort, wrap him in peace, bundle him securely with your protection, and cradle him with hope for the future. Bless this family, and may your days together grow in joy. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Congratulations. Thank you. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold, to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give you thanks, O God, for the goodness and love which you have given to us in your nation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate for the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, Father, we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creations bread and wine, we pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Christ our Passover. 
was sacrificed for us. For communion, first of all, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion. We do it just a little bit differently because of the situation with health. These containers in the bottom have the host, which is the body of Christ and our, our faith. And then the other side is the, the wine, the blood of Christ. Uh, I would ask you if you wish to receive communion and know you're most welcome to come forward to receive the container, go back to your seat, and then we will all receive communion together. Just be careful opening the wine side. <laughs> but again, you're all very welcome. While communion is being distributed, we pray in union with the people who join us on our live stream as the one body of Christ. And let us pray together our prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. As we prepare to receive communion, we reflect on the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us receive together the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. After the service, there is a bowl in the back for you to place your empty communion containers. Thank you for celebrating and having communion together. Let us pray our post communion prayer. Eternal God. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. As far as announcements, I'd like to again thank you all for being here and joining us for this great celebration of baptism, for being together as the body of Christ, and just uh, for joining us. It's just a great blessing. The quilt that you see here today is a quilt that was made by a church 
the east and um, and it's a traveling quilt if you're familiar with the theory or the idea. And what it is is to go from church to church reminding us of the Ukrainian people and their need. And so we're very blessed to be able to have this for one of the weeks. There is a description on the table in front. There's a little booklet there that if you'd like to add your prayers or thoughts to it, you're most encouraged to do so. We also, as we continue with this time of the unfortunate situations they find themselves in, we're still collecting the medical uh, needs, the medical uh, equipment. There's a list out in the hall for that. But we're also collecting new winter clothing. And again, there's a list out there for that if you're so inclined. Also, there is one, don't stampede out. There's only one gift suggestion for Moss or nursing home that has not yet been taken. I encourage someone to please take that. There's several suggestions. You need only buy one, but there's only one that we have yet to fill. And so if you wish to do that, just take it from the tree out there and uh, get the gift, wrap it, and bring it back with that tag firmly attached. So we all know who it goes to. And um, they are due, I believe, next week. So if you're inclined to do that, there's only one left. Also Wednesday, we'll have our continuing Advent reflection. We've had it for the past two weeks. This Wednesday, I post around 7 or 30, 7 or 7.30 in the morning, but they're available ongoing, so you don't have to watch it live. And uh, you're most welcome to, uh, to take part in that reflection. Also is just to remind you of our Christmas schedule, Christmas Eve, Saturday, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Christmas Day, which is Sunday, is at 8 a.m., just one service that day. The following week on uh, New Year's, we will have one service at 9.30. That's in the bulletin, but just to remind you and, and be most welcome. Other announcements, please. Good morning, everybody. Today we're having a party. So that's why we're wearing the sweater. Um, we're having fun. We're playing games. Please join us for the best Christmas party if you want to join us. And we're um do what you're comfortable with. Um, the 14th, this Wednesday, we're getting some out of the garage to help bring the church sessions in preparation to be in next Sunday after church. So if you can stay and help us. Decorate that we want. Um, there's forms if anybody wants a hair towel, anybody wants to donate some flowers for Christmas. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any other announcements? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.